Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Encore Tours Virtual Directors Exchange. My name is Frida, and today I am excited to be joined by Gerald Viert, the president of the world-renowned Vienna Boys Choir, and Suzanne Woodruff, who is the director of choral music and performing arts department chair at Woodward Academy. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to explain why we're here today and what we're hoping to accomplish. Right now, music educators and directors around the world are facing the same challenging experiences. And it doesn't matter if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, or Vienna, Austria, we are all united in our struggles. And while we may not be able to create music or travel together right now, staying connected during this pandemic is critically important. And that's why we wanted to connect musicians across the globe and allow them to compare experiences come together a little bit and share in the universal language of music. Um, today's guests are not only incredibly accomplished musicians, they are also kind and generous members of the Encore family, and I'm very fortunate to be joined by them both and look forward to hearing about their unique experiences. Um, so to get things started, uh, Gerald, would you tell us a little bit about yourself and how your life as a director at the Vienna Boys Choir has changed in the past month? Well, uh, yeah, I'm Gerald Wirth. I'm the artistic director and for several years now also the president. So I have two heads in the organization, but my preferred head, of course, is the musician head. Um, and uh, as such, I'm responsible in our organization for all our touring, for the concerts. Uh, our organization is quite different from many others. In, in our organization, of course, we have our training school, um, which is a, a special music elementary school and then we have the boys choir which is actually four groups uh, so four groups of Vienna boys choir and then we have the high school program which is also specializing on vocal arts and all this together forms the Vienna boys choir institute yeah I mean a lot of things have changed like everywhere else in the world no concerts since the beginning of March no touring this is a, a major difficulty of course for us number one because the boys look forward to, to the touring. That's the, one of the, the most important parts of, of their um, choir life. Um, and number two, concerts and touring is also the main source of our revenue. So financially, this is a very challenging time for us uh, when we cannot tour and it, it looks like uh, a lot of the concerts will be canceled in the next months until probably until August or something. So this is a major issue for us that we have to deal with. So for me as an artistic director, I'm now taking care that all our colleagues feel comfortable that they interact with the children. But my main focus is of course being responsible for the financial health of the organization. Very cool. Um, Suzanne, I'm going to ask this, the same question to you. Would you mind telling a little bit about yourself and how this has affected you with your role at Woodward Academy in the last month? Yes. Well, at Woodward Academy, I uh, am the chair of the Performing Arts Department, so I'm coordinating with our band and orchestra and, and um, dance department and a film program that we have and an AV program that they're doing broadcast and this, this type thing. And uh, so we're all trying to just come up with creative ways that we can keep our students engaged. Our choral program also, like the, like you said about the Vienna Boy Choir, has four choirs that uh, I work with. I have a colleague, his name's Steve Rotz, who I team teach with, and we have a, our most advanced group is our juniors and seniors called Festival Singers, and then we have a group called um, Choraliers, which is the ninth and tenth grade, and then we have in the middle school, which is our seventh and eighth grade for you, that's like um, 12 uh, 12 year olds, 10, 12 year olds, um, they, we divide them by gender. So we have a men's choir. So the unchanged voices can sing the higher parts. We call those cambiadas. And then all down to the changing voices, which are singing the baritone part. So huge difference in the ability level and the voice, you know, parts that those, those young men are singing. And my colleague directs them and I assist him. And then for the treble choir, uh, we have 67 girls in that group and uh, sing three part music. So um, it has been a big shift for us in the ninth grade and the ninth and 10th grade choir. We refer to them as our choral ears. 
And uh, that's a group of about 60. And then our festival singers is a group of about 50. And a lot of times at our concerts, we actually are supposed to have a concert tomorrow, which is very, um, very sad, not tomorrow, but Sunday, very sad for us. And this week would have been our week prior to that with getting everybody together. We put the upper school together, which is 110 singers, and oftentimes collaborate with our orchestra and um, just have great resources and just all of that came to just a screeching halt. So um, like you said, everything's been canceled. Uh, we were very fortunate that we got to compete in our yearly uh, credit evaluation that we go to. We call it a large group performance evaluation that our state organization runs for us. So we were able to squeeze that in. We went February the 19th and 20th, but our bands and orchestras didn't get to do that this year. So um, it's very, very different, like you say, and I, I feel your pain for the financial end of it. I'm blessed in that we are in a school that right now is strong. We are worried about our families and the uh, financial strain that it's been on many of our families at a private institution moving forward. And it's such a commitment uh, to private education. But um, it's, it's changed a lot. And uh, the, last time, the last day we saw our students um, was May, the, I mean, March the 12th. And um, so we've just finished three weeks of this remote school. Thank you so much. That's, I, I think the, the issues with fundraising, because most choirs and, and most ensembles in, in general make so much of their, their funding through concerts that to just have all of this canceled is really having a strong effect on, on, on everybody in the industry. It's, it's, it's very challenging for, for many directors. Um, have there been any, like, have you guys, adjusted to any sort of either virtual rehearsals or other ways to connect with your ensembles during this time? Or are you still feeling that out? Or is it um, something that's been put off for, for a later date at this point? Vienna, of course, we are a school as well. So we have to um, take care of our boys and so that they continue with their schooling, with their language, arts, and, and with everything else, and also including musical training. So what we do, probably what everybody else in the world uh, nowadays does, uh, is, is e-learning, teaching through internet. In musical parts, in the music side, we do a variety of things. We, we do the theory, which is music theory, which is music history, uh, instrumental education uh, is one part. That's the easy part, I should say. And then we do in small groups also ear training. This is part of our daily and weekly training anyways this also works quite well mm -hmm. it works quite well in in the melodic sense or harmonic sense it does not work well of course in rhythmical ear training because of the delay of the internet and uh, for music itself we well we send some music to the boys and uh, we explain very detailed phrases we send some files like uh, training files they can listen to where they hear their own voice in comparison to the other harmonic structure and then we meet with the boys in small groups uh, five or six uh, mm -hmm. at a time and each boy we sing with each boy most of the time separately but the other boys listen and so we we work on yeah on the music on the on the pronunciation but of course it's difficult to work on sound or, or typical choral blend or, or whatever. So this has to be postponed to when we meet again in, in real life. But the most important thing what we found is and that the boys and the, the whole fans are very happy is that we stay connected, that we are in interconnection. So it's not so important that we really gain a lot of or do a lot of education these days. I think it's much more important to stay connected. They mm -hmm. feel that they are not lost uh, they feel that we still think of them, we take care of them, and we're all looking forward to meeting them. And actually, most of our groups and group conductors also have once a week a meeting with everybody at once uh, together. And the boys just uh, yeah, enjoy talking to each other, making some jokes and interacting this way. Oh, well, do you think that there is any, any part of this that has... Um, changed your outlook on how you would approach students or your ensemble in general in the future that you may not have thought of before? Um, has it either changed some of your priorities or some of your approaches that 
you've had to now been now that everybody's been put in a more uh, challenging situation? Well, um, for us. I think this has made me see, you know, choirs are a, a group effort. And because of this avenue of communication, it's made them see, made me see them more as individual contributors because everybody's a soloist now. And um, this week we had an idea. We use social media with the kids and the, uh, they use different things, of course, teenagers than we do. But one thing that we have in common is Instagram. And so I just put out a challenge this week. Um, since we couldn't have our concert, I said, I want you just to share 30 minutes of you singing, anything you want. This is, we called it hashtag, everyone that wants one gets a solo. And um, so within a couple of days, I had received 22 videos and it just made my day. And they were just, some of them were taking some, um, I reached out to alumni first and they sent me these short videos and some of them had taken a song that they maybe sang when they were with us at Woodward and redid it and um, made it their own. Some of them did it with the guitar and sang, some of them did it with the piano. And uh, one girl was just in her closet. You could see the clothes hanging behind her head and uh, she was singing uh, a Whitney Houston song and just, you know, not the whole song, but just a little bit. And um, it was a great way to hear from them. Um, but that's not something that all of my singers are comfortable doing. At our, in our program, we don't, we don't really, we have auditions mostly for placement, but we don't exclude anyone. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in a choir, you've got the leadership and others follow those strong voices. Um, so that's been a big challenge that I haven't been able to, to reach each and each individual. And one tool that we've been using is a website called Sight Reading Factory. And um, they were very gracious and reached out to us and offered us a free membership as they were doing, you know, the schools here. And um, it was made it where each student could create their own account and there's different levels. And so that has been um, an assignment that, I, that we've given them each week. And so I'm getting an eight measure. It's very short, but just eight measures of them sight reading something. And one girl was asking, you can, it gives you the option if you don't like your recording, you can try it again, but it doesn't give you the same example. And she said, well, I couldn't get any better. And I'm like, well, then that's not sight reading anymore. You know, it's gonna keep <laughs> generating a new, a new uh, exercise for them to do, but it's been awesome. And that's something that I would not have done with everybody um, if this situation hadn't come up. So. I've been pretty excited about that. We, um, we already had our learning management system in place that the school uses, and we are on a, a synchronous schedule in uh, both our middle school and high school where they meet with their teachers over Zoom for a certain period um, you know, throughout the week. So with our high school groups, we have two 75-minute periods in the week, and in the middle school, we have about three 45-minute periods. And um, like you said, uh, Gerard, it's been great to let them interact with each other. And um, I've even let them keep the virtual background behind them. And one, I should share the picture with you. One boy had Eric Whitaker's head behind his, you know, behind him <laughs> one day. And um, so it's, that has given us an opportunity to kind of get to know some of the ones that aren't leaders that just sort of, you know, have, can, can, can hide in these big groups. Nobody can hide anymore. And so that, that's been kind of a, a silver lining. So we've enjoyed using that. And I'm also just using the website musictheory.net. There's tons of, like you were talking about, um, Gerard, just theory exercises, some ear training, things that maybe we wouldn't have had as much time to do if we were just prepping for the concerts or the competitions. That's amazing. It sounds like you've come across some really great resources. And um, I, I love that it's been a way for you to get to know all your students on a different level that you wouldn't have on a regular basis. Um, I think that we should probably get the virtual backgrounds going on for our, our team meetings at Encore now. I think that would be a lot more fun. <laughs> Um, what about you for, what about you, Gerald? Is there anything that you feel like you've changed in terms of your priorities or, or things that you found um, that you wouldn't have thought of using before? In our organization, of course, uh, it, it might be a little bit different because a lot of the things we in general do, the repertoire, what we do, how we teach is determined a lot 
by the festivals that we are asked to attend, by the touring that we're doing. Uh, but um, it uh, shows us and it, it uh, helps me and all our staff to be much more uh, open to all the tools that are around. Um, and I'm quite happy about this because uh, we have uh, been working on um, e-learning and virtual training for music teachers for quite a while, for the last two, three years. And uh, actually this situation is quite helpful that everybody now understands the importance of this. <laughs> what, do you, what do you both miss most about performing with your students right now? Oh my goodness, um, just getting to see them every day and interact with them. It's, it's particularly difficult for us for the ones that are about to graduate and um, the state of Georgia here in the US where we are has just announced that schools are not going to be not going to go back this year or so we're in the process at, at Woodward trying to figure out how we're going to honor our graduates. Some of them have been going to our school, you know, since they were in kindergarten and it's a very sad way to end it. So just we miss the, um, the getting to see them every day, just getting to check in on them and just walking around and just this the community of being together, of course. Yeah, it's exactly the same, I think, uh, in our school, the same. I mean, our boys, they're already, all the Vienna boys, quite they're boarding students, so we see them day mm -hmm. and night. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge change because uh, you see them every day from morning to night. And uh, now, mm -hmm. well, we see them maybe every second day, or me as, as kind of the artistic that I see them even less than that, of course. Wow. And what about staying connected with your colleagues, um, with other music directors? Have you been, a, are there any apps you've been using to connect apart from the ones that you use for teaching or, you know, um, anything that you've been using to connect and stay together with your, with your colleagues um, that may be different than what you've used for in your classrooms? Well, we use uh, some of the same uh, tools that we use for classrooms like Zoom or Skype to, for personal inter uh, communication, for team meetings, which I think everybody, every school, every institution has to do and, and wants to do them. And that's also important. We use our own school uh, application. Um, and through that, we have uh, at least once a week, we have a general meeting where all the teachers come together and then we have in between yeah different smaller groups like maybe only voice teachers maybe only the conductors maybe only the the other teachers yeah yeah we're having department meetings as well um, for just the performing arts department and then we're also i just before i got on with you guys i was on with the with the middle school teachers and so we're having multiple one one of my friends said that he was just meeting to out so he changed that made it made a different word there yesterday <laughs> lots of meetings one thing I'm really enjoying is a lot of my friends um, one of our orchestra directors and then our guitar teacher at school have just been sharing music and uh, sending it out and putting YouTube once again to the rescue you know we can just share so much on YouTube as a way to share our music and I've enjoyed that just having my my song that someone sends me during you know the morning to enjoy while I'm having my cup of coffee <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, you know, both of you have many years experience between the two of you. Um, what would you say if you had any advice to give um, another musician or another music ed educator, particularly ones who are new in their careers and have just, you know, stumbled upon this uh, situation like the rest of us, but without the, the years of experience that you have had, do you have any um, advice you might want to share? Um, I would just encourage them to just take a step back and um, just realize that this is something out of our control and realize that we cannot do what we normally do. And so we, you just have to change your, your mindset. We can't cover the same amount of content and we are just looking at something different now and just to stay, stay honoring of what, this, what the situation is and try to stay home like they're asking us to do to keep people safe and healthy. And um, just to not get discouraged and just try to find things like getting to talk to you guys today and see that we have such similar um, interest and we're going through the same things so far apart from each other. And um, so I think just the, the connection 
is very, very important. But I, I think it's just to tell yourself it's okay not to just, just to, because we, I've talked to so many teachers and they, they say, I feel like I'm not doing enough. What else can I do? But I think right now it's, it's okay not to do enough. Yeah, I completely can. agree with that. I think it's, yeah, stay relaxed, stay back, enjoy also the beauty because now there's some, some time, of course we have to stay home, but maybe there's a little bit more time with the family. We can even have lunch with the family, which is a new right. thing for me. Um, and of course, everybody works hard and works the best they can. And whatever we can do with our students, we can do whatever is not possible, is not possible. And it's, it, it's a phase of everybody's life and will pass by. And the, the normal life or life after this will come back to really be together and make music together again. What is the first concert that you guys would like to go to once this is all over? Well, I actually had tickets for Hamilton tonight that I'm missing. So at, uh, at the Fox downtown. So I'm super sad about that. So I hope that that gets rescheduled. Um, but I, I just would hope that I could go to a choral concert in the area and just hear voices join together again would be very encouraging. Absolutely. Yeah. It's difficult to say, as you said, because we don't know when the concert season starts. I just had a talk, a meeting yesterday with the director of the Vienna State Opera, and they also don't know what's going to happen, if they at all will be able to play at some point during this uh, final part of the season or not. So, um, yeah, we'll play day by day. And actually, we make music at home with my children and my family. So that's, that's also good. That's awesome. Have you, yeah, so that actually brings me to my other question. How have you guys been personally handling the, the staying at home? Do you have any uh, music or movie recommendations for any musicians that are also finding themselves in the same, the same boat? Um, I've been spending a lot of time outside. I have a, a, a rather large backyard and a and a big dog, and so I've just been hanging out outside a good bit and enjoying, like you said, things that I normally wouldn't get to do. I don't think there's any weeds in any of my flower beds, and normally they're just covered with weeds. Um, so just doing things uh, that I don't normally do and uh, trying not to watch too much television because I look at the screen so much at school. So. Um, taking a lot more walks. I think walks are a great thing. And another silver lining is that we've interacted from afar with many of our neighbors. Um, and so that's been something that we've never seen this many people out walking around our neighborhood. So we just keep our social distance. But um, so we're doing a lot of that and enjoying that. Yeah, it's very similar in our case. I live in the countryside, it's quite far away from Vienna, actually. And we have a little farmhouse. We are also raising sheep. We have to take care of our animals anyways, and that's fun. That keeps us out in the nature. It's, uh, we had some beautiful weather, so I'm very much enjoying that. Working on the computer and then spending an hour outside and then coming back refreshed. And uh, rather than, because you asked about movies or whatever, I think uh, rather than, as you said, sitting in front of the <laughs> TV or computer again, um, I think it's the best to just play music, maybe practice an hour of piano or whatever instrument and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. It's much more uh, strengthening, I think, than looking at the, at the video. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I love that. Um, you both are in you know, two different locations in, in very different parts of the world. I'm wondering, do you think that there's anything um, is there anything that you would want American audiences to know about what's happening in Vienna right now, or you know, just Austria in general? And same to you, Suzanne, is there anything in Georgia happening in your neighborhood that you feel you would like everybody else? Because we have many different states and you know, all of them are very different. Would you say that there's anything you wanted to share about your particular location and how your community is handling this? Um, well, there's a, a lot of support in our community, and um, I know on Wednesdays uh, they've been having a special event where people just drive by our local hospital and try to s show support and send up prayers for the workers there, and so uh, that sort of thing's been exciting to see, trying to stay out of their way, but still let them know that everybody's thinking about these first responders and all that they're 
that they're doing. And um, so we're just trying to support what our, our local leaders are saying and um, just keep everyone safe. So I think that you know, it's pretty much, like you said, the same sort of situations in many different places around the world. Some places that are a little more densely populated or use, um, you know, transit systems more so people aren't in their individual cars as much. I think we're hit a little bit harder where the virus spread more. Um, so I'm a little bit in more of a rural area like, like you're describing. And my school is in, in a little bit harder hit area, closer. We're right at the Atlanta airport. Um, but anyway, I just, you know, just feel that we're all on the same, in the same situation here and, and we just got to get through it. I agree. I think it's, it's very similar all over the world, but it's also in some way it's comforting because uh, we, we have experience from Asia, we've experienced from the here, but experience in the United States, but Italy, what people do. And uh, same as you said, in your community, people are very supporting to each other. We had in Vienna for the last weeks, there was uh, at six o'clock in the evening, there was a, an applause with open windows for the people who work in the healthcare system. And there was also a time and, and so we are still doing is that again, also at six o'clock that many musicians uh, play like trumpet fanfares or somebody sings out into the streets. Um, so yeah, things like this are, are going on. And this, this is quite fun because something like this would never happen uh, in normal life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you see those videos of, um, you know, everybody in Italy singing out of their balconies and this would never, you're right, this would never have happened in any other circumstance, you know, that, not that I can think of at least. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you have any other questions? Would you like, have any questions for each other that you wanted to discuss? Um, and I've had the opportunity of hearing the Vienna Boy Choir a few times. I think that the group actually came to Woodward Academy uh, years ago. And um, so that was exciting. And um, I just, just wish you the best and hope I get the opportunity to hear your amazing group again. Well, thank you very much. I hope that you'll join us and come to Austria at some point with um, any of your groups. We would love that. We would love that. I can't wait till we can travel again. And um, I'm, it's, it's just, it's hard to believe you guys were just in Milan with the Prelude conference and then all of this happened. So um, we're all anxious for them to get this under control and get this where we can, can be, be travelers again. Cause that's yes, amazing. Exactly. For us musicians, this is an important part of life. It is an important part of life. It, ch it has changed us. Yes. Yes. It definitely has changed us, but you know, I think that this is, you know, something that we'll all get through and like, we're all learning new ways of coping, new ways of getting through things and new ways of, you know, as being creative, which I think is, is really quite a wonderful silver lining for this, this whole endeavor. Um, so I, I, I hope that um, this was helpful for both of you. It was really exciting for me. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and share your stories and share them with the rest of the Encore family. Um, I, I really am feeling so lucky that we got to talk this way. And um, I, I just wanna thank you for taking, taking your time out to, to help us out with this. Thank you. It was Very certainly much. a pleasure. Wonderful. Thank you for connecting us. It was very good. I'm happy to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, sir. Great. Wonderful. Stay safe, everyone. You too. And we'll, we'll see you in person, hopefully one day in uh, easier times. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Wishes. Bye. Bye-bye.